All right, so continuing with our cartoon jumble where we left off, we were editing out content just by deleting selected areas layer by layer using the lasso tool. And then just hitting delete. And if you don't like what you've deleted, you can always deselect. So now I'm going to show you some tricks to the lasso tool. What if I lasso a selection, as I have here, but then I want to change that selection? I want to erase from my selection, subtract from it. Well, then I'd hold down the Option button, which is right next to the Command button on either side of the spacebar. When I hold down the Option button, you'll notice that the lasso has a little minus sign next to it. And when I unclick the option button, that minus sign goes away. As long as I have option clicked, anything I select will be subtracted from the selection. So I can refine my selections this way. And my first digital art teacher made a big point that mastering Photoshop is all about mastering selections. Really knowing what you're affecting. So here I'm holding down Option and I'm carving away from my selection window. So I'm deleting fewer areas. And then when I click without Option selected, it just deselects and allows me to select a new area. Now what if I want to add to a selection area? So I'll zoom in so you can see this and I'll minimize distractions. So I'm going to select just this. I can hold down Option, and I can edit away from it and say, well, I don't need that, and it will cut it down. But what if I want to add to it? What if I just wanted this corner, and I'm using Command Plus to zoom in as a shortcut, and I'm holding down Space Bar. I don't think we went over this. It turns my cursor into a hand, and that allows me to click and drag just moving around my image. So when I'm zoomed in, I can get to where I want. So what if I just want to add that little bit into the selection? Well, I don't need to redraw the whole thing. If I hold down Shift, it will give me a little plus sign next to the lasso tool. And now, as long as Shift is held down, anything I, I select will be added to my original selection. like so, and then I can fine tune it with that holding down option and deleting. And that way I can get really, really clean cuts if I want of the line work. Now, I don't want to encourage you being overly obsessive about this, but any areas that look just too visually busy I'm just going to cut some content from. Here's the other cool thing. I have multiple layers, and I've selected this area because I feel like it's too visually busy with all those numbers. But if I delete from this layer, the numbers are still there, and that's not what I want. So I do Command-Z to get back. My selection will move between layers. So if I select a different layer now, it will delete from that layer. Hit Command-Z, undo that. What if I want to select it, subtract from that, from this selection from this layer? Yes, that's what I was looking for. So you can move through your layers while you have a selection active, and that selection will still relate to all those different layers. OK. So that's what I've built so far quickly edit this. This is a lot of visual noise. So I'm going to be pretty, pretty bold, especially in this middle area, and just delete big chunks. Kind of like all of the craziness up there. But if everything's just crazy, it becomes very distracting. So you need areas of openness, areas of a lot of visual interest.
And even though we're not creating any of our own pixels, we're just editing and deleting by resizing, we are using our own creative voice. And then lastly, I think I've already edited from this layer a little bit. And now I just want this element to kind of sing on its own. So I'm going to basically lasso around it. And if I deleted from that layer, it would take out anything that goes around this shape. But then I'm going to also delete from the other layers. So I'm just using the same selection and hitting delete while I'm selected on different layers so that it comes out really cleanly. And once I get down to the background layer, if I want to delete, I can, but because it's a background layer, I have to select something to fill in the empty space with, and I want to use 100% white. And there we have it. All right. So this is my jumble so far. I can go through layer by layer and see if there's anything else I'd like to change. So again, if you want to delete from your background layer, you are allowed to do that. You simply, let's see what do I want to delete? Maybe this number. You simply select your area, hit delete, but instead of it just automatically deleting, it will make you fill that empty space with something because it's a background layer. And you should do white at 100% normal mode. If you also want to transform your background layer, Command T won't work because it's a background layer. But if you do Command A first to select it all and then do Command T, you can still transform it but it will fill in the empty space with whatever your background color is here. So before I do that, I'm going to use the defaults above my color selectors. So it's black as the foreground color and 100% white as the background color. And then when I select all, which you can also do under select, but the shortcut's Command A. And then I hit Command T, which you can find under edit <laughs> and free transform. Then I can rotate I can scale it even though it's a background layer. And it will fill in all the, the empty space with my background fill. And then I hit Command D to deselect. Let's see, did that help my overall jumble? I think so. I'm going to delete a little bit more. My trick is to often use the eyeballs to see which layer is affecting which selections. So I know what I'm deleting from. If you want to give yourself a little bit more visual space, I'm a little bit crowded on the edges. And I don't want any of you to have anything that's cropped off of the viewable format. So I go up to image, canvas size, and I grow the paper. Not the image, but the paper behind it. So I'll, for my proportions here, I'll just add 10 inches to each side with a white background. And that reveals, this is an important thing to remember, it reveals content that's in these layers that I wasn't able to see before. But this is the easiest thing now that I know how to select and move selections between layers. I just select around all of it. Big loop. You can select outside of your viewable area too, but it will only affect within the viewable area. Then I hit delete and I just move through the layers and will delete that content from the various layers. All right, 
So now I have a black and white cartoon jumble. It's a good place to save it as a PSD file, Carl Cartoon Jumble PSD. Anything we save that we want to keep and work on um, should have our name in it. Now, here are the new steps to add color to it. I go to my very top layer. And basically what I want to do is flatten everything into one image. But I want to keep this PSD file as the, the working file that takes up a lot of memory that gives me all of the options. So I'm going to flatten all of these layers into one layer on their own, but I'm also going to keep all of the layers that make it up. And there's only one way to do that, and it's, it's hard to do in Photoshop. It, I don't remember how I learned this, but it's, I've never seen it in a class or in a book, and it's not a shortcut they show you anywhere in the program. So this is what you do. You go to the very top layer, you have everything turned on and visible that you want. And I use this all the time. And I go to layer, and I'm going to click merge visible. And that will move all of these into one. But if I just click merge visible on its own, it's just like flattening the layer. So now there's no uh, component layers included. So command Z, I don't want to do that. Instead, I want to go to layer, merge visible, but I want to hold down option while I click it. Okay. So option, holding it down, then click merge visible. And it creates a new layer at the very top of whatever I had selected. That's everything flattened together into one layer. So that's incredibly helpful. Because now I have not only everything merged together into one layer in order to color it, but I also have all the different components that make it up should I want to edit it further. And if we want to, we can label that layer. We can double click where it says layer 6 here, and I'll, I'll call this my merged layer. The other way you can distinguish certain layers from others, because there'll be projects coming up where we just have lots of layers, is if I right click around the eyeball, I can choose a color for, for individual layers. So I'll make this red, just so I know that that's different than the others. Once I have everything merged, if I click multiply, it doesn't work. Right? So I'm going to leave it on normal mode. And that's just because it's one layer. And multiply only works with multiple layers stacked on top of each other. But now I'm going to use the next selection tool, the, the next most common tool um, for selection, which is the magic wand. It's right underneath the lasso. And just like any tool in Photoshop, you want to look at the top and see what the options are for it. The default tolerance is 32. So that's what I'm going to set it to. And I want to have contiguous unchecked. But everything else should be as you see here. It should be based on the point sample. So it will sample where I click. It's anti-aliased and it's not contiguous. Okay, then when I click on the white area, it will select all of those similar pixels to where I clicked. So you see we have now a dancing ants selection of every, everything that's white or within a 32 degree tolerance of white within this image. What can I do now that that's selected? Well, I can just hit delete. And it replaces it all with transparency. So it looks a lot like it's a multiply layer, but it's actually not. It's a normal layer that's just been cut out. So now all my line work is just, just perfectly cut out. like. Um, like taking a coloring book and taking an X-Acto knife to it and just leaving the black. What does that let me do? Well, it lets me put a different background color behind it if I want. So instead of a white background, let's make a new layer using a little post-it note. And I'm going to fill it. Edit fill with, let's do gray, 50% gray. And then I can move that behind and I've done that. In the next demo, I'll show you how we can color the line work.